All right, then we get to habitat fragmentation, which deals with deforestation. So this is the extreme alteration or destruction of habitats. We've talked about both of these topics before when we did the Endangered Species Project. And I know for a fact that many of the animals that you guys researched were being affected by deforestation, and some were also being affected by urbanization. So deforestation is the cutting or burning of forests, and urbanization is the creation of human cities and roads and things like that creating urban settings like here we have this huge city and we actually see it's right on the water i'm actually not sure what city this is but this is a hugely urbanized area that used to be nature there was creeks and rivers and animals and forest and whatever was there and it's all just gets kind of removed um as we put our world on top of nature and then i chose this picture because it really shows what the forest was like before they did the deforestation so it sort of shows like the remnants of of this forest and really kind of shows the difference between the two uh, this picture is to illustrate that the forests are like the lungs of the earth and in that they're creating oxygen and getting rid of that carbon dioxide pollution but what by reducing uh, and deforesting we're reducing the ability of the earth to do that and clean that air um, and so this is like a symbolic drawing showing that it's like reducing our own lungs and our own ability to um, survive and get the oxygen we need and clean up the air. Uh, I chose this picture because to me it kind of reminds me of like a scar, like on somebody's body, like a scar in their flesh, surrounded by what's healthy, which is the forest. And it really shows you the difference between the two. So this is a huge, lush forest. These are huge trees. The, the trucks are like right there. So these are big trees these are rainforests probably and it just really shows what happens to these rainforests when they get destroyed and what the rainforest looks like so there's all this life but not obviously here where it's been destroyed uh, this one also shows that transition really well because it's kind of going up the hill so we see here really clearly the big healthy trees and forests where on this side we see that they've don't look like that and it's been destroyed uh, just some pictures to have you guys think. This is, uh, you know, just getting you guys to think um, from the perspective of an animal. So just kind of take this picture in for a second. I'm just going to stop talking and have you take this picture in. Probably on the style assignment, I'm going to have you write what you think about this picture. So just think about it. Okay. Um, same thing goes for this koala. Same exact scenario. Uh, its forest has been destroyed and probably it's lost and confused and doesn't know what to do. Um, one of the animals they've used to protect forests in Northern California and along the Pacific coastline were spotted owls. And this is a big famous protest that took place. The spotted owl was endangered. And the... Does... And... Um, sorry, I'm getting text to my phone. Um, and... They wanted, logging companies wanted to take down these old redwood forests. And by the laws of protecting endangered species, people use this spotted owl as saying, well, you're not allowed to kill off these endangered species. This animal's endangered, so you can't destroy this forest. It became this huge uh, political issue between people protecting the forest versus these big logging companies. And it got really extreme. Some people were actually chaining themselves to the trees as a protest to make it so that people couldn't cut them down. And then one girl became very famous. She actually uh, climbed up in the trees and started living in at the top of the tree. And people would use ropes to like take her food. And she brought a lot of attention to this issue. And she was just really passionate about uh, protecting the forest. And it became a global news story. Like people around the world, world heard about what was going on. And eventually the logging companies backed off. And it was a lot of bad publicity for them. And they decided it wasn't worth it or whatever. And these people successfully protected these forests that they loved and, and cared about and protected. So it's a success story for, for those people. Uh, we've talked about orangutan endangerment and how they're losing their forests. And this here they are. This is not a forest. This is like some farm. And this is, looks like a mother and her baby who are probably scared and not sure what to do uh, in, in the face of this deforestation. Here's a picture uh, showing that they burned them down. So um, this is an area where they've burned the forest down. This actually is from satellite photos where we can actually see the air pollution from the burning of the forest goes into other countries. And this is something that I directly studied in college, which was what are the rights 
who owns the air is kind of the question. Like, so if one country has pollution that's going into another country through the air or through the water, for instance, what are the rights of that neighboring country? So in these neighboring countries where they weren't destroying their forests, they were taking the the brunt of all the air pollution that was blowing into them and this became a political issue between these countries and was a big deal as these other countries were fighting for their rights even though they weren't burning their forest they were suffering from the effects of the pollution coming from the forest burning this is the pictures to show that you know humans are affected by this there are people that live near or in these forests that rely on them to gather food and resources that they need to survive and if big companies or the government in that area allows for the forest to be destroyed or burned down, these people are going to suffer and, and struggle to have their, their ability to survive. And there's celebrities out there. Um, one famous singer named Sting, he was a very famous singer when I was growing up, he wor has worked for decades trying to help people in these parts of the world um, and fight back against these people who are destroying their way of life so that they can survive and continue to, to take care of their children. As we see, these are all kids in this picture probably going out to try to just find resources they can use to help their family. Solutions to this would include paper and lumber alternatives. So instead of destroying forests, let's come up with alternatives for paper and lumber purposes. Uh, boycotting is a big one. A lot of fast food companies destroy forests because they want to clear the land to raise their cows uh, for cheap. This is part of why fast food burgers and stuff are so cheap is because of this practice of buying land for cheap in other countries and then burning down the forest and then raising the cattle there and then shipping it to wealthier countries to sell. And um, so some people actually boycott, which means don't support, don't buy from certain fast food companies because of this. And then we also talked about palm oil with the orangutans and other animals. We went over that at the start of the semester. So... People are, are actively boycotting products that have palm oil, and hopefully we'll be getting rid of palm oil soon, as it really doesn't seem like an important part of our diet, and it's not necessary to destroy forests for it. Uh, creating new laws, stricter laws on how we build cities and how much forests are destroyed, and again, not burning forest laws, I think are really critical right now. Uh, decreasing the human growth rate, that would certainly affect forests and the cities. We wouldn't need as big cities if there was less people. So slowing down the growth rate will actually help with both of these topics and also just being more conservative with our resources. So if we are going to have lots of people in big cities, let's let create less pollution, let's waste less water, and let's treat our resources with respect and so that we can have them for future generations. Uh, because if you remember in the video you watched about coral reefs, like Chief Seattle said, we do not inherit the earth from our parents, but we borrow it from our children. And so thinking about those future resources uh, for future generations um, is also important, and not just for animals, but for humans. All right, we're going to stop there.